In uh, this video, we're going to be setting up a Raspberry Pi 0W uh, from scratch uh, using a headless method. Uh, this also works uh, with the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, 3 with wireless. And for this method, we won't need a keyboard plugged directly into the Pi, uh, nor will we need or mini HDMI plug directly into the Pi either. The only things we're going to need is the Raspberry Pi itself, a micro SD card, the faster the better, and USB power. So the first step, of course, is to go ahead and pop the micro SD card into your laptop. And uh, as you probably could tell by the title of this video, this is going to be a setup on a Mac. I also want to point out, uh, before we get started, that uh, I have a gist on GitHub that kind of quickly walks you through some of these steps. So if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that we need to do is run the diskutil command with list. So we do diskutil list, and that'll show us all the disks currently attached to our Mac. So as you can see here, disk 4 is my micro SD card because I know that it is a 8 gig card, and it's really the only thing I have plugged in other than my internal drive. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I remember this name, slash dev, slash disk4, and then I'm going to go ahead and clear that out and do uh, diskutil erase disk. I'm going to format it uh, with exfat, but really this doesn't matter. I just want to clear anything off of it that was on the card. Previously, uh, I just like to do this before I mount the image to the disk. Make sure you are formatting the SD card and not a different disk that is in your computer at the time. So once that finishes, we will have a formatted micro SD card, and we can go ahead and head over to the download page for Raspbian, which is uh, the kind of default Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi. I'll have a link to that download is uh, in the description and in that gist that I linked to. Now let's go ahead and jump back to the command line and unmount that disk. So we're going to do diskutil unmount disk and uh, then the disk we want to unmount. So after your micro SD card's unmounted, we're going to use the uh, dd command to go ahead and put that image uh, as a bootable image onto the micro SD card. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you to be very careful with the dd command. It will erase everything. And uh, it really doesn't ask you uh, to be sure, so once you put your sudo password in, uh, it goes. So with that said, we're going to do uh, sudo dd if for the input file, and we're going to set that equal to uh, the Raspbian image that we downloaded and uh, unzipped. So a quick way to get the file path to the uh, image we downloaded is to go ahead and open up the folder that we extracted the image into, and uh, just drag it right over into the command line, and it will put the path uh, in there for us. Then for the output file, we're going to use um, the disk that we want to put the image on, which, of course, in this case is dev slash disk4. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the byte size to, uh, I guess this is 4 megabytes, uh, which kind of helps it uh, move uh, faster. I think, <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, uh, go ahead and put the sudo password in, and okay, so here I've uh, mistyped the command a little bit. I can't have a space between the equals and uh, the disk name. Uh, this is going to take a long time, uh, probably. And of course, that depends on the speed of your SD card, so uh, you may want to go and grab a cup of coffee if... Uh, uh, you don't want to just be sitting there staring at your screen, or you could watch cat videos. Okay, so after that's done and you've had your coffee or whatever, go ahead and uh, change directories over to the volumes directory uh, on the Mac, and you should see a uh, boot folder in there, because after it mounted that image to the SD card, uh, the Mac went ahead and picked the drive back up, and... Uh, we can see the partitions that are on it. Now, right now, the only one that it can mount is the boot directory. There actually is another directory, or a, uh, sorry, another partition on the card, but um, the boot one is the only one that the Mac can see. If you have a Linux, uh, uh, if you're working off a of Linux, then uh, you will see the other partition on there. 
But at any rate, we want to go ahead and change directories into that boot partition. And then in here, in order to enable SSH so that we'll be able to uh, SSH into the, the Pi itself, we need to enable that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do use the touch command to create a file called SSH. And that's really all we have to do um, to enable that. We don't have to put anything in the file. So the next step is to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to use nano here, which is a text editor. And I'm going to create a file called wpasupplicant.conf. And this is where the configuration for your wireless is. Uh, when you actually go in, boot the Pi up, you can see... Um, this file by going to, uh, I think it's etc slash WPA supplicant slash WPA supplicant dot conf is where this uh, configuration is stored. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create that file though on the boot directory. And what this is going to let us do is put our wireless configuration in here uh, so it will attach to the network. So in this blank file, we're just going to put network equals uh, curly brackets. We are going to say uh, that the SSID is equal to uh, your SSID, which in my case is Nightwing, and then PSK, which is the password for the network. Go ahead and put your password in there, but I'm not going to tell you mine. Anyway, uh, you can also specify the key management, which in my case is WPA PSK. I think you can pretty much leave this off unless you have something, you know, you're using like a something different. So... I'm going to exit out of here with control X, then Y, then enter. And then I'm going to change directories uh, back to my home directory. This is just so that I can get out of the card and unmount it. Because if I unmount it without uh, changing directories, it tells me it's in use. So I'm going to go disk util, unmount disk, disk 4. After the volume's unmounted, you can go ahead and uh, pull the SD card out of your computer, pop it into the Raspberry Pi, and plug the Raspberry Pi up to power. Now on your Mac, you'll want to go ahead and scan your uh, LAN, your network, for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to use the LAN scan app. Uh, you could use the ARP command line tool or possibly some other command line tool, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this because I've got it. And I will see that uh, DHCP on my network has assigned the Raspberry Pi uh, a .38 address. Um, I'm going to go ahead and SSH into it. So I do SSH pi because that's the default user at uh, that IP address and then I go ahead and put in the default uh, Raspberry Pi password which is Raspberry. So um, put that in and boom we're in the Pi. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do here is set it up so I can log in using my SSH key. So to do that in the Pi, I'm going to go ahead and use the install command. The install command basically allows you to copy files and set attributes for those files. And what that's going to do is go ahead and create the .ssh directory in the Pi user's home directory. And it is going to set the permissions of that to 700. Once that's done, we can go ahead and type exit and jump back out to our uh, local machine here. Now we're going to go ahead and use the cat command to transfer our public SSH key over to the Pi. Now that that's done, I should be able to go ahead and run the SSH command again, then use my passphrase for my SSH key and get into the Pi. If you don't have an SSH key set up on your local machine, then don't worry about it. Uh, you can skip that step or you can set up an SSH key. If you like this content, make sure you like, share, and get subscribed to my channel. Thanks. Have a good one.